Love Hate continues with the pass catchers. That was Andy Dalton mic'd up from week four against the Bengals. You heard him. He's going to keep throwing it to Deontay Johnson, Matthew, who headlines our pass catchers love list. Yes, for sure. It's worth noting, by the way, uh, Deontay Johnson did not practice today. So obviously we will keep an eye on that injury. But assuming he goes against Washington, I like him this week. Currently my number seven wide receiver. When Andy Dalton has been under center, he's averaging 18.3 fantasy points per game. He's got a 29% target share. And wide receivers that have seen at least seven targets against the commanders are averaging over 19 fantasy points per game. Why do I bring up seven targets? Because Deontay Johnson has gotten at least 10 targets in three of the four games with the Red Rifle, the Red Rooster, the Red Rocket <sighs> under center. Red stuff with Andy. Yeah, yeah I mean, under let, the red stuff, yes. under the red beard. Mm. Uh, almost 11 targets per game. I mean, this is like, you know, Cooper Cup, Michael Thomas, OPOY yeah. type of stuff uh, from Deontay Johnson. So we've always known the talent was there with Deontay. Sure. He's just always been in these weird situations where he's had someone uh, opposite him, like picking, stealing targets, or he just hasn't randomly been getting in the end zone. As kind of bleak-ish as things are in Carolina at the moment, like this is the Dalton to Johnson is fun, and every week sure. it's uh, it's productive. Mike Evans also makes the love list, but Jay, another guy that also did not practice today, so something to keep an eye on, but it feels like Mike Evans is going to play. We talk about this when we talk about the Bucks. Under Liam Cohen, this offense is very pass-happy. They are passing over expectation that has helped Mike Evans. Yep, they're third in the NFL in pass rate over expectation after being negative on that front last season, so a much more pass happy kind of modern i would say nfl offense under cohen compared to what dave canales was doing last season with the relentless uh runs on with rashad white for two yards on first down so i think with evans is a strange one because godwin has been so incredibly good but evans coming into the season was the guy that everyone wanted i think you still have to regress a little bit to preseason expectations so you probably have godwin over evans from now but the big mike evans game is coming he is still mike evans he's been a bit banged up but against the baltimore pass defense that frankly has struggled a little bit. It's not the same unit that it was last season. Uh, I think this is a favorable matchup for us. Yeah, Evans. not shocking. What do I like? I like touchdowns, right? And so Deontay Johnson has the most end zone targets in the season, as you see there on your screen. But who's number two? It's our boy, Mike Evans. And it's worth noting, yes, he did not practice today, but it's also, it's the Monday night game. So their practice schedule is a little bit behind. If he doesn't get, um, if he doesn't, you know, uh, feel better by tomorrow or Saturday, then we can start panicking. But right now, all indications are that he's going to be fine in what should be a great matchup. We already talked about how we don't like going against that run defense. They, they're, they're kind of a pass funnel defense when you face the Ravens. You're forced to throw, and you're often successful. Baltimore has allowed multiple touchdowns to wide receivers in three of their past four games. Baltimore has given up the most receptions and yards on deep passes. Why do I bring that up? Because Mike Evans has the second most end zone targets this season, five in the last three games. They throw to him deep as well. Obviously, Godwin plays more in the slot. So, uh, yeah, Mike Evans is a top 12 play for me this week. Zay Flowers, a top 15 play for you, Matthew. He comes in as wide receiver 14 in this same game against the Bucks. The Bucks are allowing the sixth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers. This should be a fun, entertaining game with a lot of scoring. There's no question about it. So if Mike Evans is scoring, it stands to reason Lamar is going to have to be throwing as well. Nine different tar – at least – there's been six games the Ravens have played. Two games they just blew everyone out, right? In the four games in which it was competitive, and we don't think Balt uh, Tampa Bay gets blown out here. We think Tampa Bay, pretty good team. We think this one's going to be close. Baltimore will be competitive here. In the four games in which the Ravens have been competitive, Zay Flowers has at least nine targets in every single one of them, a 30% target share. And wide receivers that have seen at least eight targets against Tampa Bay, averaging 18.7 fantasy points per game. That's pretty good. Give me some Zay Flowers as a top 15 play this week. How good do you think Zay Flowers can be, Connor? Can he be a legit wide receiver one uh, the rest of the way? Because, I mean, the past two weeks in particular, these are games that they, they won. Uh, 21 targets, 240 receiving yards. He's just so clearly the number one guy in that pass offense. Like, can he be, you know, in that kind of category with like a, a Malik Neighbors type of guy the rest of the way? I think he'll be on the fringe of that. I don't ever expect that kind of production. The I'm thing on is, Ross St. Brown, maybe. Like the way that I'm on Ross. Because the volume. Is, yeah, that's the a, key. He's a it's, it's, I don't want to call it cheap volume, but it's schemed volume is sure, what it sure. is under Todd Munkin. Yeah. That's, yes. Now, are you asking from an NFL perspective or are you asking from a fantasy football perspective? I think both. I think from an NFL perspective, it's interesting. It seems like he has taken a leap. I mean, this guy was fantasy, yes. very high he's talented. He's, yeah. he's crazy yeah. talented. Fantasy, yes. NFL, I would, I would say no. Okay. I think eventually teams are going to force them to do something else yeah. because they don't throw to a lot of other wide receivers. So why would you keep allowing 
the not cheap but the schemed manufactured I'll, yards. I'll tell you why because uh, because Big otherwise Henry. if you're doubling then then. <laughs> Lamar Jackson and, and yes. Derrick Henry just have wide open lanes. Right. And you, you've got to keep that it's spy It's a well-built there. offense. It's a yes. well-built offense I wonder, as well. Like we focus so much on the impact that Lamar Jackson has benefiting Derrick Henry in the lanes. That Derrick, like the yards before contact stuff for Derrick Henry this year is like triple what it was last year. It's completely right. insane. But probably haven't focused enough on how much Derrick Henry positively impacts guys like Zay Flowers. Like it just seems like the combination of Lamar and Henry just being so destructive uh, for opposing defenses just makes it easier for guys like Likely and Bateman and Flowers. Great space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's got the ability, Derrick Henry does. Like, Derrick Henry is a guy that, like, once he starts getting up ahead of steam and he it's all downhill, like, it's just like, he's you know, he's pushing off guys and he, he can break off a 20, 30, 40-yard run and they just didn't have, you know, all due respect to Justice Hill and Gus Edwards and, you know, they had a little bit of explosiveness with Keaton Mitchell there for a, for a cup of coffee last year, but, like, you know, they were rolling out Melvin Gordon at one point last year. Like, they just – Henry just brings a dimension to that run game that they just haven't had yep. there. Like, he's – you know, he's an elite running back. They've never had an elite running back there. I mean, he's, he's Derrick Henry. He's the greatest he's, running back since, you know, <laughs> peak Adrian Peterson. Right. Right. Yeah, he's, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And consistent, which is yep. so rare at the position. But to put a bow on it, Matthew, I fully agree with you. I love Zay Flowers this week against the Bucks. I think Todd Bowles' secondary has had an awful year, to be honest with you, and he's going to get a ton of work. And they're banged up. Yes, it's, it's, that's part it's, of it. It's, it's had a tough year. Yeah. They're they're banged up. They're scheming them perfectly. Uh, they're scheming them. And while fantasy-wise, there's like it's been inconsistent, right? Because, oh, all of a sudden, Nelson Aguilar catches two passes. And then here comes Charlie Kohler and Isaiah Likely. And you're like, wait, help me make sense of this. But, like, my point is is that they're getting just enough from all the other pieces that Zay Flowers is is obviously the focal point. But it's hard to like double him and bracket him. He's he's so creative in his route running. They they scheme him open. They do a good job. Yep. And so, anyway, Brock big, Bowers. Yeah, we're Bro a Zay fan. We're Brock uh, Bowers yeah. also on the love list here. The Rams are allowing the second most fantasy points per game to tight ends. Jay Devonte Adams straight to the Jets. This is Brock Bowers' offense through the air. Yes, number one tight end the rest of the way. Probably sure. in a tier by himself. Like how many other guys are the clear number one target on their teams to tight end? Like probably Travis Kelsey now for the Chiefs. But outside of that, like it's just really Brock Bowers. And Brock Bowers obviously expect to get more volume than Kelsey the rest of the way. And the Rams defense just doesn't just doesn't have the horses this year. Uh, it's a combination of uh, very young and then also very old in spots like a corner with Trey White uh, struggling a bit. So just doesn't seem like there's any real uh, opposition uh, against Brock Bowers, and he's going to get as many targets as he can handle. Yeah, only tight in the season with four games of six or more receptions, and that was with Adams in the lineup for some of that. So uh, Jacob Myers also banged up a little bit. It could, I mean, he could flirt with like 15 targets this week. Yeah. Some others receiving votes. Tyreek Hill on the love list here. Jacoby Myers that you just brought up. Matthew, of course, we'll see. Uh, his status, Juju Smith-Schuster, Demario, Pop Douglas. Bub Means tonight on Thursday Night Football. Yes, we have a Bub Means appearance as the Saints are out of wide receivers and Dalton Schultz on the list as well. So it's crazy to have Tyreek Hill ever to make the love list because he's oh, so, such an obvious start. And fair. he's not even on the love list. He's in others receiving votes, but that just shows you the state of the Dolphins passing game in the year of our Lord, 2024. Uh, Tyreek Hill comes in at 22 for me. He's played two games with Tyler Huntley, uh, at least that Huntley has started. 32% target share, and hopefully off the bye, they figured more things out of this offense. Colts have allowed the fourth most yards on deep passes so far this season. We'll see if Jacoby Myers plays. He's still banged up, but worth noting, the Rams have allowed at least one touchdown to a wide receiver in four of five games so far this year. Juju Smith-Schuster, proud member, newest member of Live at Noon of the Cock. That's that's the way my my season has gone. But look, he had a 24% target share. Pretty big last bid time on we him. saw him. I'm just well, you kept outbidding me. And I was just, I was gun -shot. You rage the stupid, bid. I rage yeah. bid. I rage bid because stupid Connor over here outbid me on Tyrone Tracy. And, Xavier uh, Leggett. And, and, yeah, Xavier Leggett. And like, it's like three times in a row, effing money bags uh, Connor over here. <laughs> it's good. Money bags it's just, just, yeah, just kept, so I was just like, screw it. This money's burning a hole in my pocket. I got to do something. Like, I keep losing. Yeah. That's how the Patriots Epic. ended that's, up with him, by the way. That's what we're dealing with here. That's 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 why it's the league of assholes. Because the like, if if these Wasn't assholes would team? leave anything on the waiver yeah, wire for you to bid on, <laughs> what? I cut him for someone better. I, yeah. remember, I just got rid of him. I yeah. him. Yeah, and, and well, you know, it is what it is. Well, you get producer Damien had to cut Leggett. That's the other thing is is that 
as you get into buys and injuries, like we have one IR spot. Oh, it's terrible. And league. so it's awful. So yeah. you're actually having to cut good people. Yeah, it's a cut juju. Right. It's very annoying. Yes. I had to do it because I traded with Connor. It was a two for one where I got um, Russell Wilson and J.K. Dobbins for I, uh, Sam Donald. I had, a tr- I, had a, I had to cut Zach Ertz, who, who yeah. you immediately picked up because that's great th- week, it, 11 it's points. A, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of vultures out there, but you're just like you're playing this roster roulette because you can't, you don't want to drop the guys that are on bye, but hey. Anyway, yeah, give me some juju. <laughs> give me some juju. Uh, Demario Douglas as well, Pop Douglas. Jacksonville worth, allows the third highest catch rate to the slot. Worth noting uh, that as well. And um, and we'll talk about Bub Means a little bit later when we talk that game tonight. Jay, Nico Collins on IR, and we finally saw Dalton Schultz was like the Undertaker meme. He came out of nowhere after we thought he was long gone. Well, this is the same thing last year where I was criticized, lambasted for drafting Dalton yes. Schultz last year, and he ended up being relatively solid. Like, he is the, the third viable guy in this offense. It's thanked Dallas Stefan Diggs. There were rumors about other people emerging, <laughs> like Xavier Hudson, and they didn't surface. Didn't so it, was the Dalton, yeah. it was the Dalton Schultz show. Um, just quickly before we move on, Matthew, it seems like Tua Tagovailoa is just going to come back next week. That's what been all the reporting. Tyreek Hill has just been completely under the radar. Is he just back to being like the number one wide receiver in fantasy as soon as Tua comes back? I, I think so. I would, trade Tua, Tua, I would trade Jamar Chase for Tyreek Hill, I think. Like, Ooh. I'd be looking I, like I, I don't way, know I'm, if I would. I'm, I'm in Tua some, is one more bump away from being done for the I'm season. I'm sure, but like... Have you seen wrist lately? That's right, fair. Yes, yeah. That's I'll fair. Say, I've, I've literally seen some leagues, more shallow leagues, but I, I've... I've seen a couple of leagues where Jalen Waddle's available. Yeah. Yeah. It's, been just, it's, it's been that bad. It has been that bad. It's been that bad. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you're not starting Jalen Waddle this week, but I agree with you. I do think Tyreek Hill is a buy low candidate. Mm. It's worth, by the way, it's worth seeing if Tua Tunga Vailoa was dropped because yeah. I did see him dropped in some leagues, you know, as well. So worth seeing all of that as well. Last thing on Juju, just just while he, he's not only on the on the others receiving votes because I'm trying to talk myself into it, but it is a good matchup. Niners give up the fourth most yards per game to the slot. He had a 24% target share the yeah. last time we saw him. And as bad as 2022 was, he still averaged over 11 fantasy points per game, 11.6 in his one full season with so the Chiefs. Wide receiver 27? Yeah, wide yeah. receiver 31. There you go. Right. Like, so he's like, a, you know. In our league, that's gold. And <laughs> if, you're in a th- if you're in a 12-team, uh, three-wide receiver league, you could do a lot worse than Juju and probably have. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.